This is the Red Cat 51 telescope, assorted with all sorts of accessories, which I'll get to in a moment. The Red Cat 51 telescope is a telescope that is and has been un undeniably extremely popular. And when it first came out, I had my doubts about it because uh, it came with a focuser that was a lens style focuser like we have here, a helical focuser. And helical focusers are notoriously hard to have proper um, autofocusing systems fitted to. So like the EAF from the ZW, it's easy to fit to um, a focuser that is a draw tube type of focuser. It's easy to fit to a focuser that's like from a Schmidt Cassegrain or SCT type of telescope. And there are tons of adapters made for that. But at least at the time, there were no like good ways that I could find to do autofocusing with the Red Cat 51, which kind of disqualified the uh, Red Cat to me, especially since I had salivated over the previous uh, telescopes that uh, ZW had released, which was the, uh, the Star 71 in particular. The second version was something I really, really wanted because for once we had a Petzval design, so I didn't need to care about fac back focus between the telescope and the camera sensor always a blessing and it had like uh, all of the belts and whistles that you would want in a refractor but the red cat 51 it being super sexy super beautiful super red and and really really good looking uh, completely surpassed everything and i think it's one of the most popular telescopes for beginners amateurs and advanced amateurs around here it's like it's quite amazing and i resisted the appeal until now when i'm kind of being forced to use it and i am finally able to use it because of focusing solutions that became available to, for the red cat uh, but what the thing with the focusing solutions that i saw all of them involved around the focuser ring here around the helical focuser to put a permanent ring a plastic ring around it together that was geared to be able to move the focuser around although when i say permanent i really mean like fixed by a set screw but it means that anytime you want to remove that ring from around the focuser you actually need to unscrew it slide it off that kind of stuff why would you want to do so simple it's so that you could put your red cat into traveling mode and make it more compact and take the dew shield that's at the end of the, the red cat and then put it back on the other side. But this changed when one of my subscribers contacted me about basically loaning to me their red cat fitted with the autofocusing solution that they have put together and that they are selling on their Etsy page. This solution is actually already mounted here. You can see it. We have the ZW EAF here on the side. I have a guide scope at the top and I have the ZW um, ASI Air Mini mounted on the side. But most important, it has a belt tensioner and a timing belt to move the uh, Red Cat focuser that doesn't involve locking a ring kind of permanently around the helical focuser of the Red Cat. And that's what really got me interested because then you can have a, a solution where you can remove the timing, timing belt and the elements that are around the timing belt anytime you want to put the Red Cat in a configuration as I showed earlier where you can just reverse the dew shield to make it smaller and to go for travel, uh, international travel, etc, etc. It, it makes, you know, it, it makes a small difference, but it makes a good difference nonetheless. And to be very honest, there were quite a few things that I, about, I was a bit worried about be because the dovetail mounts of the um, ASI Air Mini, but also of the guide scope, they are 3D printed along with the rest of the focuser assembly. And I was wondering, like, is 3D printing going to be strong enough for that? Now, I now have experience 3D printing myself, and I already knew the answer from my experience, the answer being yes. Uh, especially since I do believe the material used for that is PET-G, which is one of the like higher end type of materials to do 3D printing and more resistant in general, which is very good. And I wanted to make sure, so I set up the mini guide scope, the ZW mini guide scope here on top, and I can absolutely use it as a handle for the whole equipment, no issue whatsoever. So that's good, and that seems to be working really well. 
and overall the set looks nice and compact and really really cute and very very red and so if you're a ZW user this is kind of like the holy grail of redness obviously the 3d printed parts are also red to to complete the whole color scheme I have to say it does look good anyway let's install the timing belt and the belt tensioner to see a bit how well it works. So the installation seems to be quite simple. We have the focuser here and you need to first set it before you put the, the timing belt to a position where you are near um, infinity focus with the focuser unlocked of course. So I'm going to put it like near the mark here so I do believe it's going to work. We'll see under the stars. And then there is the, um, the timing, timing belt tensioner here which will be basically geared on the focuser like this and it has a little arrow here that can be matched with the arrow that we see here at, uh, at the bottom. And the reason why we want to match it and to make sure that at first the focuser is near the infinity posi position is to make sure that the uh, pulley from the ZW EAF and the belt tensioner are basically opposite from one another, uh, like at the other end of the, um, of the focuser tube because if you put this tensioner like around here for instance as the belt uh, pushes and pulls the tensioner we could have like a lifting effect that could introduce some backlash and we don't want that. So with that I can just slide the timing belt and put it over the pulley and then we can add the uh, tensioner. And here how it looks like the belt is now parallel to kind of like the focuser holding assembly and we have like the two arrows kind of uh, lined up with one another. Now to be, because I was curious, I wanted to see the limits of this. When I put this belt tensioner all the way over here, then we, I saw a lifting effect that had an effect on the focusing. When I put it here, it was fine. So there is quite a, a, a bit of play that it can have without lifting and without causing issues. So even if your initial setting the focus to infinity, isn't good enough or it's it doesn't it's not the actual very close point to your infinity focus it's still quite um, usable so that's really good to know and it makes the installation quite easy and this thing is super easy to put in and to remove it's like um, really convenient so we have everything set up here on the uh, focusing system. I have my ZW ASI Air Mini on the side here simply because I didn't want to have it in the uh, dovetail shoe here so we could see what's happening. And I have the uh, ZW ASI Air software also opened up with everything connected and everything working. And I have the focuser window opened. And I just want to see how things are going to work once I move the uh, focuser. And as far as I can tell, everything seems to be working quite fine. There's a tiny bit of backlash as expected. There's obviously back backlash from the focuser itself. There's backlash probably between the pulley and the belt. And there's probably a tiny bit of backlash between the belt tensioner and the actual uh, focuser of the telescope. But it's very workable and the way that the ASI Air actually deals with backlash in terms of the autofocus, it uses a very large overshoot compensation technique, which is the same that is in Sequence Generator Pro and in Nina. So it will work perfectly fine with the autofocuser. At least that's what I assume is going to happen. Also, a very important point is as I reverse directions here, I can see that the speed is constant. There's no like going f slowly at first and then going faster because that's always a bit of a pain when that happens although it's also taken care of by the um, overshoot compensation uh, for the backlash so I do expect everything to be working fine. But of course, the true test of whether this is working fine will be under the stars. So I'll be testing this under the stars. Of course, if you're interested in getting that focuser assembly with that very ingenious kind of timing, timing belt plus tensioner uh, that leaves the focuser ring free for the user to remove the whole system whenever they want, uh, you can go and look in the description. I'll also put a pinned comment with the link to that. Of course, the autofocus that I'm going to do, I need to check that it works well. So instead of using the default uh, William Optics kind of transparent bad enough masks that is really not fine enough to provide fo uh, precise focusing, I've replaced it with a very fine uh, bad enough mask, which I will be using to check the, uh, 
uh, focus, this pattern of mask is made by Luke from the Lukomatico uh, YouTube channel. And I'll also put links in the description if you're interested in that. So with that, we have tons of 3D printed stuff. Uh, we have 3D printed cable management at uh, here. We have the 3D printed focuser and we have a 3D printed baton of masks, all available, all links in the description. This is a lot of fun. I gotta say, damn, this looks good. It really looks really good. Yeah. Full ZW plus William Optics can be beautiful from time to time. I'll admit that. It's pretty much nighttime, and I have my little setup with the AM5, the Red Cat, the Focuser, the ASI 120mm as a guider, the ASI 071MC Cool or Pro as a main imaging camera, a whole ZW ecosystem <laughs> set up behind me. And I have the ASI Air software open on my phone. Uh, and man, it has made some strides since the last time I used it. How I wish I could use the ASI Air with other focusers, other cameras, etc, etc. <sighs> Anyway, I'm currently on the ASI Air and I have pointed the telescope and my AM5 mount to Algeba, uh, which is a great star right now to do uh, focusing exercises on. And I have, as per ZW's uh, instructions for good focus, achieved rough focus so the stars are visible in the image before I start the autofocus process. So starting from now, I will be doing the autofocus and we'll see how well it works because overall, who cares about how the focuser works as long as the autofocus itself works decently. So let's try it out. I am going to go to autofocus and we've focused already manually until we see the stars. Then we can tap the button on the right to start the autofocus. Let's see how well it works. And there we are, the autofocus seems to be completed. And let's take uh, an image just to see how it looks like with uh, Algebia uh, zoomed in. And here we are, and we do look like we are indeed in good focus. This uh, focusing algorithm is working annoyingly well. It's uh, hmm, pretty impressive. One of the things that I've noticed is that it uses a huge amount of overshoot to do backlash compensation. I can see this could be an issue with some focusers. I'm not sure how much it is using uh, compared to like the actual settings that we put in the software. It seems to be unrelated to the amount of backlash that I put in the uh, ASI Air settings. So I'm not sure exactly what the algorithm is, but it's massive. Anyway, that's the ASI Air. The focuser itself seems to have worked. We got those beautiful curves without any issues. So the V curves are beautiful. And now is the time to actually check whether the set of that uh, focusing equipment that I received from my subscriber, Nick, the ZW EAF, the ASI Air algorithm, and the Red Cat helical focuser, if they all worked together well to give us good focus. And for that, I'll be using this pattern of mask. We're gonna put it on now and see whether we'll get a nice focused on Algeba. If we don't, we have an issue, but my little finger tells me it's gonna work. Okay, I've put on the mask. This is the moment of truth. Let us take an exposure and see how it looks like. And wow, just wow. This is absolutely perfect focus. Okay, okay, I'm convinced, I'm convinced. So now, you know, this beautiful machine behind me, I don't want to give it back. <laughs> what should I do, guys? Uh, yeah, I, I understand why people uh, choose to stick with the ASI Air. I'll have to uh, use it a bit more, but this is a lot of fun. And at the same time, I understand why people like the Red Cat, because once it's fit with a competent autofocus solution like the one we have here, it's really, really nice. I mean, I can I can see myself doing like those autofocus runs all night long and, and not caring. It's like fast and it seems reliable and then I don't have to care. And for uh, ASI Air users or even Nina users, but especially for ASI Air users, this is like the perfect travel kind of setup with a focuser that is well designed, provides good results, lets me actually 
make the scope even smaller by reversing the dew shield whenever I want to. Keeps, of course, the scope close to the actual mount so that we don't get more moment of uh, force by the scope being further away from the axis of rotation of RA. It's just uh, well made all across. I'm really impressed. Um, I don't know what else to say. This is a really, really cool setup. What would you guys want me to do more with this setup? Uh, please let me know down in the comments while you're on your way. Leave a like or a dislike to the video if you didn't like it. And uh, also, you could join the channel or support me on Patreon if you want me to do more and more videos and have more and more fun uh, doing this uh, this photography business. Or even, you know, who knows, go full time in the in the end. So I could de dedicate all of my time to making those videos and helping the community, helping you guys overall. With that, again, the links are in the description. I am going to be looking forward to your feedback on this system in general, the focuser in particular, and maybe ASI Air. Don't try to convert me. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Well, especially since my main cameras don't are not supported, right? So yeah, that kind of disqualifies me from using the SIR, except with this particular setup that I absolutely want to steal and not return. <laughs> <laughs> with that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the almost full moon and the stars as well. And I'll see you next time.